Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this series of videos we are inspired by the latest book that I've released, Re-Engineering the Chess Classics, written together with my childhood coach Steve Giddens and it looks at lots and lots of classic games, some uh, well known, some less, and uh, finds plenty of new ideas, new concepts, new insights together with the engines and uh, uh, well this video series is like that only here I'm focusing on a couple of um, uh, classic players that I really like and uh, well we're carrying on with David Janowski and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, a game he played as black in 1916 in a match against Jackson Showalter and um, yeah actually Janowski played quite a few uh, matches against uh, um, yeah one of the strongest American players Jackson Showalter um, back in 1899 he went to America and uh, played a match and beat him 7-2 and then there seemed to be like a couple of informal matches which um, yeah well Janowski certainly claimed weren't formal ones and uh, that's maybe because he lost them I think he lost them 4-2 uh, and 4.5-2.5 uh, and and something like that um, and they were due to have a, a, a revenge second official match, but uh, somehow it never quite happened. And it was only in uh, in 1916 that um, that it took place again. And there again, Janowski won 7-2, even though he was, you know, at that time somewhat past his prime. That might be the same uh, the same uh, for uh, Jackson Showalter as well. Uh, but always very very interesting games. They were both um, very uh, very very aggressive players. I think uh, Edward Lasker in his fantastic book uh, Chess Secrets I Learned from the Masters, he called Jackson Showalter the Lion of Lexington. I think because he had a huge mane of of yellow hair somehow. But I, I may be uh, I may be misremembering. Um, so yeah, the opening again. You know, um, uh, amazing inventiveness from uh, David Janowski. You can see this position. What came up? Well, let's have a look how it came about. So d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, c4, and d takes c4. The queen's gambit accepted, and uh, David Janowski was um, yeah, you know, one of the uh, uh, the people who played the uh, the queen's gambit accepted the most. So obviously uh, was my favourite opening as. Uh, chess professional so obviously uh, like what he uh, what he's doing there um, and after knight c3 he played the move uh, a6 which um, I also played quite a lot now the key line most dangerous line is um, is e4 b5 e5 knight d5 and here white uh, normally plays the move uh, a4 attacking b5 and there are loads and loads of, uh, of ideas here um, I played uh, knight b4 I seem to remember against um, against Elvis maybe uh, 1997 world championship in uh, in in uh, in Groningen um, and um, that was uh, quickly agreed a draw in actual fact um, yeah it probably is a draw in actual fact but um, I never got the chance to show all my nice variations um, I think I've also I've also played the uh, the main line as well takes queen d5 which is sort of all right although uh, yeah you know I do feel that white's just um, a little bit better there um, and uh, this move's also become very popular. It was the idea of court noise. Um, was it knight b6 straight away? No, I think maybe e6 first takes and then knight b6, just holding that c4 pawn. And so, you know, sort of cramping the white position, you know, making sure the light squares are quite weak. So plenty of ideas there, but um, uh, Showalter played uh, a4, which is uh, actually not that strong. Um, not really because of what uh, Janowski played, but um, more because after this move, Black can, uh, can play knight c6 and transpose into a good Chigorin. A good Chigorin, does that even exist? Well, it does in actual fact, because uh, with the uh, you know inclusion of a6 and a4, this knight has a very nice soft square on uh, on a5. Um, you know, they can protect the c4 pawn and uh, threaten to come into b three um, and uh, I had a number of games in this and similar systems and um, yeah it always worked out very well I saw a game of myself against um, the, the Swedish Grandmaster Johan Barkagen um, well he wasn't a Grandmaster then back in uh, 1989 the World Under 16 Championships in Puerto Rico and uh, yeah this just went very very well for black Bishop F5 D5 and I went Knight B4 and uh, you know with all these soft squares on the Queen side for the Knight yeah, this is no time really for White to be um, to be uh, you know trying to be clever. And uh, well, after Knight D4, Bishop E4, um, White was completely lost already, because the the point is takes takes Knight E4. Whoops, Queen takes D5. And I'm threatening Queen takes E4, but I'm also threatening Queen D4, 
queen takes knight c2 check so you know i was just completely winning there uh, yeah it was all rather horrible knight f6 gf6 e3 queen a5 and castles and uh, obviously completely winning so knight c6 would have been best um, but um, uh, Janowski played uh, the move c5, which is also quite decent. Uh, d5, e6, and now e4. And um, yeah, very similar to a line of the Queen's Gambit accepted without um, a, a6 and a4 included. Um, in general, that should kind of help black, you know, just in general. Um, there's no going to be Queen a4 checks or checks on b5 or anything like that. So in principle, you'd expect it to, uh, to help black. But uh, here Janowski comes up with something quite uh, sensational. Um, e takes d5 is quite normal and um, would be quite decent. But he played the move knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. What is the point of that? The point is that after knight takes e4, we go e takes d5, and we've got this huge mass of three pawns for the piece. Now, this idea, um, I knew this idea, but um, from the game uh, Tal against Karoli, um, but that's um, a Queen's Gambit accepted without a6 and a4 included, so you get this position. And uh, yeah, Tal against Karoli was uh, yeah pretty um, interesting game, you know, doing this against the great Mikhail Tal, but uh, Tal um, yeah played very purposefully and uh, and won. And I also I also remembered, uh, I think there was a game of Zuzu Polgar in this as well. The weirdest thing I found was that apparently um, in a game El Labat against Capablanca, it says Capablanca casual, New Orleans 1915, just reading from the database. Capablanca played this as black and, um, and lost a game. Um, I'm a bit, yeah, I'm wondering a little bit about that because there is a famous Capablanca against Labat game with Capablanca White, a, a simultaneous game that Capablanca said he played extremely well. He was very proud of it, but never seen this one mentioned before. But anyway, it looks like the great Capablanca in 1915 might have played this. Um, I don't know whether... Uh, whether David Janowski would have been aware of it. Um, yeah, I would have thought not, to be honest. Um, but knight takes e4, knight e4, and e takes d5. And kind of the, you know, the first thought that I had when I saw the position, well, you know, why isn't black just winning, basically? You know, those pawns, those big pawns restricting the white pieces, you're just going to march through, aren't you? But actually, it turns out to be a lot more difficult than that. And uh, funnily enough, this is actually a very crucial moment for white. Um, you know, you, you often find that um, uh, the moment just after a sacrifice, that's um, really the one where you've got to be you know, as, as the, the one facing the sacrifice, you've got to be at full um, alertness because normally it's in the move after that sacrifice or the move after that maybe that you have the chance to refute it. And um, if you just, um, you know, play along for a few moves, play quietly, then normally the sacrifice works much better. And uh, this is actually true because um, um, in this position, um, Showalter played the move knight g3 and uh, actually the very best move is to play knight c3. And you know, Black's key problem is that um, uh, it's actually much harder than you'd imagine to advance these pawns. Uh, for example, I think, I haven't actually checked this, but I think that, uh, yeah, you know, d4, uh, we can just play bishop takes c4 here. And if dc3, we've got this standard tactic. And uh, bishop g5 check, picking up the queen. So um, uh, very hard to advance the pawns. And the, the idea is you attack the pawn on d5, and after bishop b6, you go knight g5. Um, and then you take off, you've you know, kind of weakened the light squares in black's position. So you know, even if black plays d4 now, we go knight e4. But what you do here, you go g3. And uh, the point is bishop d6, we go bishop h3, attacking the pawn on e6. It's now well known you know, against uh, this type of system. And uh, knight d4 castles. Queen f6, f4, and, uh, well, you know, gradually white sort of uh, starts encircling the black position. For example, this is a game uh, uh, berserk against ethereal. Um, so, um, yeah, really sad that uh, that uh, the berserk engine is uh, the... Uh, yeah, the programmer has said that he's no longer developing it anymore, so uh, he's, he's retired, basically. Um, very, 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 very sad because it's such a strong engine. But, uh, well, obviously, when programmers are spending all their free time on stuff, yeah, you know, you've got to accept it if they uh, if they decide to stop at some stage. But, um, um, yeah, can still... Uh, use it a little bit for uh, for fun and you know here you see the um uh you know 
Berserk has done this really, really nicely. Um, you know, you've got the, the pawn f4 stopping e5 from advancing. The knights uh, found another outpost. It's attacking these two pawns. And then this bishop's going to come to c3 and attack the knight on d4. It's just very, very hard for black to advance if white does it properly. Of course, in the human game, more tricky. But actually, it uh, looks like, you know, in, in, in human games, uh, strong white players seem to, to handle this pretty well and, and do a pretty good job. Um, Showalter did a less good job. Played knight g3. Um, bishop e7 from um, uh, Janowski showing uh, that he understands that, that, that he wants to play bishop e6 uh, but he doesn't want to allow knight g5 which you know again for such a, an unusual position it's uh, it just shows you know excellent um, excellent chess judgment and understanding uh, bishop e2 um, and now um, bishop e6 and uh, the engines were not amazingly thrilled with bishop e6 um, preferred rather to play moves like knight c6 and yeah you know keep this bishop uh, sort of developed somehow now I wonder whether um, you know Janowski's idea really was uh, playing bishop e6 to threaten you know d4 to d3 as quickly as possible and I think that Showalter maybe believed him because his next move was knight d2, you know, attacking the pawn on c4. And doesn't really make sense unless you believe that, uh, you know, that, uh, that d4 is a threat. But actually, you know, the engines think that it's not really a threat. Uh, Rook e1, you go d4, you just go knight d2, hitting the pawn on c4. And if d3, you go bishop g4. And, you, you know, you just start uh, uh, nibbling away at the support of c4 here. It's just going to be rather difficult for black. So it wasn't really a threat yet, but uh, Showalter played knight d2, castles and f4. And uh, I kind of understand the logic. I mean, you're threatening f5, and uh, when black plays f5 to uh, stop that, you'll get the e5 square for the knight. But um, but still, it's costing a lot of time, and um, I, I don't know, it's, it's not really not really achieving that much right i mean black's not really uh, particularly stunned by it somehow so yeah you know it's 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 uh, you really feel that showalter's on the on the wrong path here so rookie one knight d4 played don't know whether that was completely necessary but it doesn't really anything rook a3 um and now bishop f6 uh, the engine wants to wants g6 very quickly we'll see that yanovsky uh, plays a bit later but i mean the engine just wants to play g6 get the bishop away from f7 you know off the e-file and then start you know pumping uh, on the queen side with b5 you know and uh, black's already got a very strong position here but after rook a3 bishop f6 played bishop f1 and now uh, g6 from um uh from yanovsky uh, here knight f3 played um and now a slightly strange move i mean um the engines just wanted to take off uh on f3 um because after all you know when you play knight f3 you're threatening to get into the e5 square so um just wanted to um uh, to take off on um on f3 um and then um uh, rook takes f3 sorry the board's going to flip a little bit just a slightly different move order bishop f7 now um and uh yeah what can you say uh, knight h1 was what my uh, my engines wanted but uh you know b5 knight f2 d4 i mean these guys are rolling and uh, berserk won a very nice game against ethereal in here i mean we got g4 but uh you know it's just black, black just in complete control here really so um um after you know after knight f3 queen d6 which is what uh, janowski played knight e5 b5 you know rook a e3 well white's feeling a little bit better about life i mean you know you've got the knight on e5 blocking the bishop um you've got your rooks behind it you know you're going to start thinking about moving this knight and uh you know playing maybe for g4 or you know h4 to h5 who knows something like that um rook f8 was played and uh knight e2 yeah um the engines were, were looking at going knight h1 they seem to like this idea knight h1 and we can either threaten uh, you know g4 or we can go g3 and h4 or you know something like that that seemed uh, quite decent but knight e2 was played and now knight c6 and uh, a sort of a little shadow game uh, starts up knight c3 knight d4 I don't think that Janowski would have taken a draw by repetition. He was uh, known for his uh, determination to avoid uh, draws at any cost. Um, if he'd um, um, if he'd wanted to, instead of going knight c6, then knight b3 is uh, is pretty reasonable here. You know, we're just going to take the uh, the bishop, get the bishop pair, and then rook a b8. You know, and uh, well, we still got ideas like d4 coming in. Uh, the engine thinks that uh, you know that white can still draw this, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I, with white, I'd be feeling very pessimistic in this position, I can tell you. 
Um, but knight c6, knight c3, knight d4, king h1 played. And then rook a d8 uh, from uh, Janowski. Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, the engines were um, um, were often looking at uh, moves less like um, rook a b8, you know, just to support the pawn, you know, but um, rook a d8 is, uh, is okay. A B A B ninety two yeah here uh, Schwartz actually misses a nice trick because uh, there was the possibility of playing the move B four um, yeah if you go uh, C takes B three then I can take on B five I get rid of this knight on D four also obviously breaking open the queen side and if you go C takes B four I go Queen takes D four and uh, well I mean Black still got this um, uh, this uh, these pass pawns on the Queen side but you're starting to entrench yourself a little bit you know with Queen on D four Knight on E five so and it's going to be hard to push those pawns because they don't really have much minor piece support you know this Bishop isn't helping very much for example so yeah this would have been um, a, a pretty decent attempt a lot of my uh, engine games now were, were just ending in draws there but after Knight E two we got Knight C six again. Um, and here knight g1, yeah, um, uh, knight c3, uh, you know, would have been quite reasonable uh, for, from uh, Showalter again, just to uh, to ask Black what he's doing. Um, yeah, knight a7 was was one idea that was uh, was played. Again, I'm threatening d4, so you know, you've kind of got to, uh, you know, White's got to sort of deal with uh, with all that. Um, um, but the engines were going g4 in this position, d4, g takes f5, and uh, yeah, you know, the game's just a, a bit of a mess there. Um, but um, uh, yeah, Showalter played knight g1, which is really quite weird. And uh, now d4 happened, and uh, um, rook e2 and d3, and uh, all of a sudden it's going, you know, really horribly wrong here. Um, yeah, somehow, uh, um, yeah, you know, whenever you see, you know, the, the opponent putting so many uh, pieces on the back rank, you think he's setting up the pieces ready for the next game. You know, this is uh, does look really, really bad now. And uh, I mean, it, rook f2 is seems like the most normal, but then we we're going to take take bishop e5, knight f3, bishop f6, and then uh, well we've got uh, b4 and uh, c3 coming in, haven't we? So uh, Showalter played rook e3 and now d2 and uh, takes 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 bishop e5, little intermezzo because obviously if you took on here, then knight takes c6 would be hanging, but we can just go um, bishop e5 first, and after fe rook takes d2, well pretty clear that black was completely winning here b3 f4 c takes b3 and uh well white was not long for this world with all those extra pawns for black and uh, <laughs> all three of them being uh past queenside pawns but that was uh i thought that was a very imaginative game from uh from Janowski there you know just um from the opening just uh, turning it into a, a very unclear very difficult position you know and um, yeah I mean the key thing there was for white to be alert straight away you know get to grips with the position and straight away you know hit back and get some gains back you know and uh, that was you know possible through bishop b6 knight g5 to get the two bishops and uh, also weaken blacks control of the light squares you know in return for this you know very nice pawn mass and then it turns out that this pawn mass, however nice it is, is, is hard to advance. You know, that there's just leaves too many weaknesses behind if you're uh, moving it uh, too far forward. But um, still very interesting. And uh, well, after knight g3, the game kind of proceeded as you sort of could imagine it happening, really, with uh, white's pieces just being totally squeezed by this enormous pawn mass. But again, you know, just a very inventive opening play, you know, from uh, David Janowski, you know, and uh, really... Uh, um, yeah, you know, just throughout his career and, uh, you know, also I've looked at so many games now and uh, so many interesting ideas in the opening that, um, you know, uh, have become uh, tried, uh, they've certainly been tried out on many occasions in uh, in the modern game and sometimes like the, the Sveshnikov Sicilian I showed uh, a few videos ago, you know, just, um, yeah, proving to be a mainline system. So, uh, yeah, really impressive from uh, from Janowski. There we are. I hope you enjoyed the video. Why not give a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Take a look at my new book, the Reengineering the Chess Classics, or even the one before that, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. And otherwise, thanks for being part of the channel and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.